Hey guys, this is Mike. Thanks for listening to Feeling Twisty, episode 61. I was thinking earlier, I'm not sure why mathematics popped into my head, but I was thinking about, you know, the power of imagination being, you know, what, well, I'm thinking about what I always talk about. And it made me think of algebra class back in high school and college. We would have a problem, you know, and the instructions would be to solve for X. So we would have to solve, find the value of X. And these, these problems were ridiculous, right? It would be this huge equation with all these, you know, the teacher would throw in fractions and fractions on top of fractions. And you had to know all the different steps and all the rules. Each little bit had a certain set of rules you had to apply. And if you forgot one of those overarching rules that applied to the whole thing, before you went to the internal parts, you would, your solution would be wrong. Of course, back then, I, uh, <laughs> I had a teacher tell me one time, uh, my sophomore year of high school, he said, you know, Brignac, you're a contrary person. <laughs> Always wanted to find the easiest way. And so even in math, I would try to find the solution and then work backwards, you know, okay, well, what, what do I need to do? And fill in the blanks with the salute, with the, the steps. I drove my teachers crazy with that. And no surprise, I wasn't always, I was seldom right <laughs> when I would do it that way. But the cool thing is that this, what I talk about here on Feeling Twisty and what so many great people out there are talking about and what you're learning about, it's the power of your imagination who and what you're conscious of being is what you're experiencing. So in a, in a sense, you're skipping past all of the details, all the steps to get to the solution. Because the solution is, whatever it is, whatever your X is, the, to solve for your variable, your X, maybe it's food or house or health, or money, whatever, it's yours. And so the solution is the fulfillment of that desire, moving to the end and living in the end of your wish fulfilled and seeing the world, wow, problem solved. I'm seeing everything differently now. I'm reacting differently. I'm breathing better now. Oh, I have an appetite now. You know, everything changes when you move into the state of the wish fulfilled and you don't have to worry about all those details. All the, you know, the fractions and all the different rules like in algebra. So anyway, that's just an, a, a little aside uh, right off the bat there. I was thinking about that earlier. So you can solve for X and not have to worry about all the steps in, to get there because you know what to do now. Move right into the end, right into the solution. That is your salvation. Okay, so I wanted to talk about uh, my friend Doug. We've been chatting a lot on over email. Hey, Doug. And I want to talk about one of it. He asked a question about what I have talked about uh, a number of times and what we all go through, I believe, that you know, even though we've planted the seed and we've, we know we're, we're living in the end and we're continually trying to live in the end, yeah, that's what it feels like at first that feeling of I'm kind of all over the place, you know, I'm, I've planted that seed. I know that I can do this and I've done it, but then fear and doubt creep in during the day. And we notice, Oh, I'm kind of off track here. And it does, I understand uh, the frustration. I felt it that, uh, that frustration of like, oh my gosh, I did it, but it's just so hard to, to stay in it. I keep getting bumped. I keep falling off the horse. Um, I can try to think of another metaphor. You know, I just, I keep screwing this up. Is that feeling? I've been there. Oh man, I've been there often. It's kind of like uh, thinking way back 45 years yeah, something like that, to when I started to learn how to drive a car. 
And when I initially got behind the wheel and started driving, I was terrified. You know, every, I was fine on the country roads where I grew up, way out in the country. You know, I drove around <laughs> no problem at all because it was just me and the cows driving around the gravel roads. But when I first got onto a street with traffic, everything scared the hell out of me. And, and that showed up in the way I was driving. You know, I would twitch the wheel and stop too way too fast or too soon, take off too fast, swerve, all these things because I'm, I'm freaking out about what I'm seeing through the windows. Kids playing in the yard. Oh my gosh, are they going to run out and, and get in front of me? I got to slam on the brakes. I remember the coming up to my first busy intersection. Scared the hell out of me. What do I do? What do I do? Bridges, traffic, intersections, all these things just bombarding me. And, and, and I was reacting to it in the way I was driving. So anyway, I'm using that as, a, as an analogy. To, this is what I liken it to. Learning, you know, it's, you're always doing it. I know I say and other people say it, and Neville said it, that you've, everything you're experiencing, you've created, you've done this, okay? We've done it unintentionally or unknowingly uh, most of our lives. But I'm talking about getting behind the wheel and that you now you know it's up to you. You're driving the car, and you know it's all up to you. And for me, it seemed like sometimes it reminded me of those early days of trying to drive a car. All the things, you know, what the five senses tell me that aren't real threats or real problems, but things that distract me. You know, I couldn't, even looking at, down at the radio, I would kind of swerve a little bit, veer back and forth in the lane, all these little things. But I kept going and I kept driving and I kept driving. And then it became easy, second nature, so much so that you, you know, I would think that I could look at my phone as I drive, even though way back then we didn't have car phones, but uh, I'm not condoning looking at your phone while you're driving. I'm just saying that's how comfortable you get, you know? So anyway, for me, it's like that. That's what I think of when I'm going through all of this over the past couple of years. You know, it's, I know it's up to me. I know I'm doing this. I'm driving it. I'm in control. And the more you do it, the less distracted you are by the things going on, the car pulling up next to you with the loud music or, you know, the police lights coming up behind you. All these things that as a new driver, a young driver, or inexperienced driver can get distracted by or, or react to negatively, go away. Those kind of things fall off because you, you've gotten a handle on it. You can do it. You know what to do. You know when to brake. You know when to accelerate. And it's smooth. Now, personally, as far as driving goes, I like to sit in the passenger seat now. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I don't mind driving. But you get my point. My, what I'm trying to say is that it was like that for me, where I knew what I was doing, but yet I was still getting distracted by the facts of the world or what my five senses told me or what my memory of what life used to be like. But the more you do it, the more you just keep going, keep driving, knowing it's up to you and stay focused, living in the end. And it does get easier. The distractions get less. I'm not saying, I don't know, I still get distracted. Stuff happens and I'm like, oh, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Why is that? You know, I take a look. Why am I reacting that way? Why now am I reacting like this? Because I know what's what. Okay, let that go. There's no fancy trick. You're, you're it. You're the God of your universe. So if you decide to let go of a fear and let go of something, it has nowhere to go but disappear unless you choose to dig it back up and hold on to it again. Like I talked about in the last episode, 60, you know, open the door, come on in, fear and doubt, frustration, the devil, 
Okay, so I wrote down a few things for Doug, kind of uh, answering that question about, and not just giving an analogy, you know, which I could do. I could think of all kinds of things. Water skiing, how I learned to water ski, how this is, it's like using the imagination. But I just wanted to write down some actual things that that go through my mind, that, that I've used and, and that work for me. And these aren't steps. These aren't things you have to do. These are just what goes on inside me and what keeps me on track whenever I have those times. And some days, you know, it's, it is like a, a tennis match or, or like, uh, you know, what's faster than that? Like Pong, like I mentioned before, like the old Pong video game. You get the ball trapped between your paddle and the wall and it just goes brrrr. Some days it's like that. And so here are the things that, that I use that get me back on track and keep me, my hands on the wheel, 10 and 2, facing forward. First, I know all of my experiences are what I am conscious of being. So knowing that as an overall thing, this is the umbrella and all this other stuff comes under it for me, that knowing that I am the cause. I am. Number two, <laughs> Don't write these down and number them. <laughs> I'm not giving you a, a how-to list. Unless you want to write them down. That's great. But don't take this as a, what you have to do. Knowing that I can never die. I can never die. I may slip off this lovely outfit of Mike Brignac. <laughs> All five six, foot six, 130 one slash 135 pounds of it. I might slip this off, but I never die. And why am, why am I bringing that up? Because for me, that I've noticed, you know, when, I, when there's fear and doubt and worry, like I've got to get this done. This has to happen. I have to have this and this and this. Because there's these thoughts that we all think growing up and we're raised to believe. We, you get one life, and you better make it the most of it. Yeah, make the most of it. But I used to look at it as if this has to be done. I don't, I'm, I'm going to die a failure. Well, I never die. So it kind of, for me, relaxes that a bit. No pressure. And some of you may be thinking, yeah, but I want to experience it now. Okay, that's cool too. But isn't it also wonderful knowing that you never die? Doesn't it give you the freedom to live your life more fully, more absurdly irrational, knowing that you never die and you're here for a reason? You came into this world for a reason. Neville talks about it, that we all are put through the furnaces as we awaken to the God within us, to who we really are. I'm not saying be grateful for the, you know, I'm grateful for the crap I'm dealing with. Uh, no, but I don't regret the crap I went through because I'm, I'm awakening. Every, the little pressures and pains that I, I felt and that I brought on myself unknowingly all brought me to this point. And it's so cool knowing, I mean, really knowing that I never die. Number three, <laughs> stop beating myself up over regrets things, choices I've made in the past. We've talked about that before. Don't give those any meaning. Drop that. That has nothing to do with who you are right now. Unless you choose to make it so. Take the meaning right out of it. Or if you want to, revise it. Revise that. It's up to you. But don't go hunting for crap to uh, revise. If it comes up, if it's something it's like, oh, I don't, I remember that. I don't like that. Revise it, but don't beat yourself up over it. And 
more to the point of what this is about, don't beat yourself up. Those times that you feel like you got bumped or that you got a little off track, you reacted to the world, you reacted to circumstances. Okay, so what? You planted the seed. Get back into the state. Get back into that awareness of being the fulfillment of your desire. Whether it's money, uh, healing, your health. And I know, I know that healing is one of those things. It's kind of like money that you're constantly reminded of what the facts of the world tell you, you know? You're dwelling in a state of wealth, of plenty, however you want to word it, a wealth creator. It doesn't matter what you call it, whatever it works for you. Or you're dwelling in the state of healed, healthy. And then, like in my case, I'm still in a wheelchair. Or you're still, your muscles are spasming, you're, you know, all the pains and aches. and Or you're looking at your bank account. Don't beat yourself up over reacting to that. Don't give that reaction any meaning. I used to do that a lot. I would uh, get so upset at my reaction. Oh, I got bumped. And then I would, it would just became a cycle, just a tight little whirlwind circle of getting bumped and then addressing the getting the reaction. You know, round and around and around and never really getting back into the state, my desired state, the one of my wish fulfilled, dwelling in, in being that new state. And I just got caught up in, there was a term last night, uh, last night they were, this is, uh, last night was when uh, the news came on. I don't watch the news. And so somebody in my house so, showed me a post and then we turned on the news about Iran shooting missiles over it. Uh, into Iraq toward the American troops, you know, in retaliation for the uh, the general that was assassinated, well, killed last week. Anyway, I really don't watch the news anymore. I don't pay attention to it. So I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it just, it's funny when you're not, you're not giving it any weight and you're not paying attention to it. When you, when it, it was just wild, the stories. And I didn't react to it like, oh, woe was me, or we're all going to hell in a handbasket. The point I'm getting to is the term they were using last night. Uh, these pundits were talking on the news about the cycle, how the U.S. assassinated the Iranian general. The Iranians attack U.S. troops in Iraq. What's the U.S. response going to be, and then what's Iran's response going to be, and they refer to this as a doom loop, D-O-O-M loop, doom loop, and I thought, had two thoughts, ah, I know what that's like, that's like when I would get caught up in worrying about the reactions and reacting to my reactions and trying to revise the reactions and then never getting back into the state of my wish fulfilled. And then the second thought was, I'm using doom loop on tomorrow's podcast. <laughs> so don't get stuck in a doom loop like me. Don't give those reactions meaning. Okay, you did it. Get back in. Be still. And no, I don't mean run back into your room and close the doors and go through all of that. Just right there, wherever you are, as soon as you notice your reaction. Tell yourself, if you need to say something, say whatever that gets you back into it. I got this. You the man. It is done. So be it. I have spoken. <laughs> I like, uh, because I'm you know a father of five and said this often, and it was always my final word with the kids uh, and the final word for my parents when I was a kid, and it shut down all arguments. But why, Daddy? Because I said so. And so for me, sometimes I use that when I wander off into a little bit of fear and, and doubt. Like, wait, no. Because I said so. That's why. That's why it's done. And it gets me right back into 
where I want to be. All right, number four, being okay with everything I just talked about. <laughs> be okay. Revise where you feel like you want to revise and just suck the meaning right out of it. Like a mosquito sucking the blood out of your arm. You know, just boom, it's gone. Number five, kind of similar, being okay to take a look at myself and being honest. Being honest where, you know, like, okay, why am I reacting? What am I holding on to? What am I afraid of? Why am I afraid? Why am I impatient? Why am I worried? For me, those three things, fear and worry, frustration, those all kind of go together. You know, they all, for me, come from this feeling of lack or that I'm separate in circumstances outside of me or in control, that people make the decisions and that it's not up to me. And I have moments of where I forget, you know, I forget who I really am. For me, they come from the same source, fear, worry, impatience. It's this feeling, this belief in lack, or I'm trying to, those reactions, the fearful reactions and the impatience come from me trying to figure out the middle, trying to figure out the steps. You know, there are times when things pop up, uh, even now, you know, and I catch myself like, dude, you're worrying about this? You're worrying about, why are you worrying? Do you believe there's lack? And I really laughed. The other, the other day, I laughed at myself because um, I had started thinking about something and I realized, whoa, here I am worrying about the details, worrying about the steps, thinking that there is lack, that lack is possible. And then I, I reminded myself that I decided that 2020, my theme, like Amanda uh, talked to me about, and I've mentioned the other day, unbothered, but I'm going for absurdly irrational. <laughs> what the rational mind tells you is usually not going to be, not going to jive with what I'm talking about and what you know to be true about yourself. Number six, keep going. Keep going. Don't let those moments where you feel you got off track keep you off track. Just get back in constantly. And it's not hard. I used to think of it as hard. I used to hate it, hate the idea. So initially, I used to refuse to believe that, you know, nope, it's not hard. Nope, nope, I don't ever get off track. I don't get bumped, which is great to assume. I do assume that now. But I was doing it from a different state. I was, I was saying, nope, I don't get bumped. No, I don't get off track. I don't have fears and doubts. In a way, I was just ignoring it. I was completely full of fear and doubt and worry. <laughs> I hadn't really moved states. I was still in this fearful state. So, when I would say that and deny like that I could, you know, the, the chance of me getting uh, off track, I was just ignoring it. It's like the equivalent of a child, you know, putting their ears, fingers in their ears and trying to n drown out something, you know, la, 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 I can't hear you. That's what I was doing at the time. I didn't want the, I didn't want to think about, oh, this is going to be hard. I'm going to have to constantly be monitoring my thoughts and what I'm imagining. Well, yeah, you do. It's, why not? We are all imagination, like Neville says. So yes, be aware of how, where your thoughts go and what you're feeling. But it's not hard. It's like driving. I like that analogy. You know, you're driving and you you do have to move. The steering wheel doesn't stay locked into one spot while you're driving. You have to, there's always a little bit of movement, a little bit of movement. 
got this, you're moving. That's the same thing with how I do it. It's just a constant noticing. Notice what I'm imagining. What am I feeling? My body will tell me. My body tells me quickly when I'm, you know, I'll notice, wait, why is my chest tight? Or why am I hunched over? Why am I holding my breath? Feeling like I'm bracing for impact. Oh, because I'm dwelling on this one little thing and it's becoming a thing. You know what I mean? You, a thought pops in or somebody says something and then, oh, 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 that's how bad it can get. Oh, crap. It's going to get this bad. And then it's like, no, dude, stop it. And I'll laugh at myself. I have fun with it. I'll talk to myself. When I notice something like that, I'll just say, yeah, I see what you're doing there. You might think it's crazy. Some may say, don't, don't talk to yourself. and You do whatever you want to do. I talk to myself all the time. You're always talking to yourself, by the way. So I have fun with it. Okay. Oh, and that was number seven. Have fun with it. Keep going. Have fun with it. Uh, and if I have this number seven, I have fun with it. I mean, play. Get Sit down. Get quiet. Get into your quiet space. I, I personally... I like, there's a chair downstairs that I, that's perfectly fit for me. It's comfortable. I can sit down in it and kind of lean back in it and it's perfect. But, you know, we have a house, of, there's still five or six people living here. And so there's always somebody moving around and doing stuff. So that area only works when I'm uh, alone or they're all asleep. But anyway, or in my room. Anywhere is comfortable for you. Wherever you go to meditate or get into the silence or just to get quiet and imagine. And just do fun things. Just get still. You know what to do. And move around your house in imagination. Start with that. Move into the kitchen. I've, I've There are times where I've gone down from, from my room. I've gone downstairs to the kitchen and gotten used to moving around in a different place and time. Moving around the kitchen at Christmas, on Christmas morning, has a different feeling and a different smell because we actually cook on Christmas mornings, a special breakfast, and I'm making uh, Bloody Marys or Red Snappers. Very good drink, by the way. A Red Snapper is a Bloody Mary with gin instead of vodka. Anyway, so you just practice moving, going somewhere in imagination. In your house, that's an easy one at first because it's you you know what's where and you can you can easily feel the faucet handle in your in your hand or the refrigerator. It's gotten to where now I I've gone and actually moved things gone to the kitchen and other places in the house and moved things around in imagination and then gone down there physically to see it. Now I was just playing, but I, I knew I could do it. it got, I've gotten to the point to where I know that that's possible and it's, it's happening. I can move things around and change stuff, move the remote from one chair to the other, you know, it's not like it's any big deal because we, we are all imagination. So why not? So practice with that. Play with it. Go somewhere else. Go to your childhood home as a child. Bring back the fun memories of a Christmas morning as a kid or something fun. Don't go back to something crappy. Revise that. <laughs> Pick somewhere fun, a fun memory, and go back into it. Go somewhere completely new. Go to Disney World. But have fun moving in imagination. You're moving in time and space. You're actually moving. You're leaving your physical body right where it is, and you're going someplace else. I've chatted with people. I've had coffee with relatives I'd never met before that have 
that left my sp- sphere, my span of time. That some wild, fun things happen. So practice with it, play with it. You get better and better. You get more comfortable moving in imagination. So have fun. And as far as bridge of incidents go, Doug asked me about that. And I used to worry about, uh, you know, is this a bridge? Neville talks about how once you plant the seed and you've moved in imagination, once you are conscious of being who or what you want to be, that you'll be carried across a bridge of incident, that everything will work out for you, things will happen, and don't be alarmed. You know, he talks about you may imagine be imagining for a better job or a pay raise, and then the next day you get fired. Don't be alarmed. And I, for a while, I would worry about that, the bridge of incident. Okay, is this, what is happening? This is a bridge. This is part of the bridge. I'm on the bridge. I'm on the bridge. I'm on the bridge. Jump off the bridge. I'm on the bridge. I'm on the bridge. And there I was again, hyper-focusing, zooming right down into it, into these little things. This has to be on the bridge. And then one day I realized all I'm doing is I'm still looking for signs. I'm looking for signs to indicate that I'm on the right track. For me, if I'm looking for signs and freaking out and worrying and, and confused over if this or that is part of this bridge of incident, I'm not on the right track. I've, I'm not living in the end. If I'm truly living in this state of mind, the state of being where my wishes, whatever they are, are fulfilled, that I'm already that, that I'm already living it then why the hell am I worried about a bridge of incident or looking for signs? You know, I don't look for confirmation to tell me that I'm a father of five. They remind me all the time. (laughs) Dad, what's for dinner? No, you don't look for signs. Look around you. Look at where you are now and who you are. You're not, are you double checking? looking for signs and looking for proof you are who you are? No, you know it. And so it's the same for me. Living in the end is not looking for signs or worrying about a bridge. So Doug, let that go. And I remind, this is a reminder for me too, to let it go. I used to be so focused on that and worried about it. And I see posts, people asking about it. Usually it's around the, it's, what well, it is? It's when I'm conscious of, you know, that, thinking about it. I see posts and questions from people asking the same thing. So to, my advice is don't get, don't worry about it. Stay in that state of your wish fulfilled. Remain in that new consciousness, of that new you of who and what you are being. You know, you're being something completely different now. You're being financially free. You're wealthy. You're healed. So if you're healed, would you be looking for signs? If you're wealthy, would you be freaking out at the calendar knowing, oh, here comes the countdown. This bill's paid. Reset the clock. I've got 30 days to pay this damn thing again. No. And I'm, I'm talking about everything I talk about is stuff I've experienced. I've gone through this. So... I've been there. I've watched the clock and the countdown of the days. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And the only thing to do is to continually get back into that new state, living in the end, being that wish fulfilled. But, Mike, it's so hard. I know it seems like that. But you keep doing it. Keep your hand on the wheel and you keep tweaking it. You just keep a little bit left, a little bit right. Keep going. Keep going. The only thing that will stop you is if you yank that steering wheel over and ditch it, you know? Kind of like, screw it, I'm done. Back to the real world. Back to the rational world. Don't do that. I've done it. Don't do that. Keep going.
yeah, I know. Keep going. Keep going. I'm talking to myself too. You know, I was a reporter for years and whenever, so I guess it's from then, from that point, you know, as a reporter, I didn't take anybody's word for it. I would get a story, I'd get some information on a story, a news item, and I didn't just run with it. That would be stupid. That would be like, you know, fill in the blank news, uh, national news station, <laughs> anyone you want, regardless of whether you're liberal or conservative. You can think of a news, a news channel that, uh, to fill in the blank there, that runs with things, you know, that seem to run with things that aren't verified. So anyway, I would all, I, I wouldn't talk about anything or accept anything as true until I've got credible sources. So do the same thing with this. You be your own credible source. You be your primary source. As a reporter, I wanted a primary source, a secondary source, even a tertiary source, if I could get to it. I wanted as much credibility to the story and to make sure it's true or as true as I could get it, get to the truth, you know, before I'd report it. So take that same scrutiny, scrutinize this yourself. You be your own primary source. You go for this experience. Don't just take my word for it or anybody's. Sure, you can use me, you know, as an example. Oh, well, Mike's doing it. And I know Mike Brignac, if he can do this, I know I got this. So use me as a, as a, you know, a push off point, anything to stir up that imagination and bring in that knowingness that, oh, I got this. You try this, you do it because you're doing it anyway. I know I say it all the time. It's all up to you. And I know you got this. One more thing. When I was a kid, every year, you know, right around uh, my birthday is at the end of September. So at the end of, right, not long after my birthday uh, was the time when I would start watching for the Sears and the JCPenney Christmas catalogs to come in the mail. Oh my goodness. That was so much fun. I would get those big catalogs go straight to the toy section and i always wondered you know, like why do they even bother putting clothes in this book underwear really who wants that for christmas i'd go straight to the toy section and i would get out my loose leaf paper and a pen and go through both catalogs page by page and picking out the toys i wanted and i would i was very uh specific and detailed with my toys with the, what i wanted for christmas i would write the toy down and then i'd have a column next to it for page number item number color if that was a, if there was a choice and i would just go down and fill up the page sometimes two pages and then do my mom a favor my mom and dad a favor i would go back through the list and star the ones i really wanted and then go back through and double star the ones I really, really wanted. And then I would hand my list over to my parents. <laughs> I knew, okay, my, my parents spoiled me growing up. I, we were very spoiled, which is fine. I loved it. It was fun doing that. It was fun being a spoiled kid. But that's not what I'm getting to. My point is that I would get, hand over my list and I knew I knew my parents would get what was on the list. And the reason I would, you know, I would star and double star the thing is because I, I knew, you know, I would give them options, but I knew they were going to get me those things. But I knew it. I knew handing this over, handing my request over to my parents, that I would get that for Christmas. And so for those, that month or two before Christmas, from me giving the list over and Christmas morning, I knew what I got, but there was still so much excitement about it because I got to unwrap it and experience physically holding it, but I'd already experienced it. Now I had no idea what I was doing when I was a kid, but looking through the catalog, I was imagining playing with these 
toys, whether it's Hot Wheels or Fisher Price uh, Adventure People. Remember those? Those were so cool. And of course, Star Wars toys and Star Trek. G.I. Joe, all these things. I, I would imagine having them and playing with them already as I'm making my list. And I would hand it over. And I knew, oh, I'm getting it. I got it. Because I trusted my parents. I knew they were reliable. They got what I asked. And Christmas was fun because not only did I know I got what I asked for, there was always more stuff. Surprises, wonderful things. Things I didn't expect. Better than I had imagined. You see where I'm going with this, I'm sure. Be like that. Be like Mike. <laughs> Be like a little child. I'm not saying write down a list. and The point is the feeling. Have the feeling of a little child knowing that it's his father's good pleasure to give him the desire of his heart. And that's, it was that knowing. I knew I was getting Stretch Armstrong, you know? I knew I was getting the Fisher Price Adventure People Castle. All of these things. And it's cool, even as a kid, some of the things that were on my list that I wanted, Christmas morning, oh, look, my little sister got it. But it's cool. My experience of it was exactly the same because I got to play with it. You see, things, it may not be exactly. If you say, if you get stuck on the details, no, I have to have this. It has to be this. But even as a kid, I was experiencing these wonderful things, even though they were actually given to somebody else. I still got to experience it. I was still conscious of having it, of being that experience. So be the same way. Know that whatever it is you want, you can have. Move into that feeling, that beingness that it's done. And be open and excited about the surprises and how it's bigger and better than you imagined. It always is. That's a lot better than have, you know going through life saying, wow, this is worse than I imagined it would be. Stop that. Be like a little child. It's your father's good pleasure to give you your desires. I love you guys. This is Feeling Twisty.